I can't believe it's already time for me to sit down and film this video, but today we'll be discussing every single book that I read in February. I actually read quite a bit. Granted, some of the books that I read were novellas, so they weren't that long, but still, I'm kind of proud of myself with how much I read this month, especially since it was a shorter month. So we're going to begin with two books that are from the same author. I read What Happens After Midnight and Maybe Meant to Be by K.L. Walther. What Happens After Midnight, I think actually came out last year, and then Maybe Meant to Be was a re-release. It got released with a brand new cover. I guess I should start with What Happens After Midnight. I ended up giving this book a four-star rating. If you didn't know, K.L. Walther actually wrote The Summer of Broken Rules. I read that book last year, absolutely loved. Last time I was at Barnes, I decided to pick up both of these books, and I'm so glad I ended up reading What Happens After Midnight. It's such a cute little YA romance. I'm normally not a huge fan of YA romance, but for some reason, K.L. Walther's writing just makes me a fan of YA romance. Just such cute, chill vibes. And this one follows a main character who's in her senior year of high school. She actually goes to a boarding school. Throughout her entire high school journey, she's been a, for lack of a better word, she's been a goody two-shoes. She's never done anything bad. She's never been in detention, nothing like that. She has one last opportunity to kind of let loose and to participate in her senior year's prank. Problem is the person who is in charge of their senior year prank happens to be her ex-boyfriend who she still has feelings for. Throughout the book, you basically get to see the little glimpses of their relationship when they were together. You got to see how great they were, but you also got to see what happened to their relationship and why they ended up breaking apart. It's a very high school relationship vibe. Their whole breakup could have been avoided had they just simply talked to one another. But you have to remember that these two are high school students and they're young and they don't really know how to to navigate communication issues within their relationship. I thought it was really sweet. I loved how the book basically spanned throughout one night. You have to see them pull off this prank, the aftermath, and I'm finally learning how to communicate with one another. It is second chance romance. If that is your thing, definitely read this book. It also just felt so nostalgic to me. It took me back to my senior year of high school and it had me smiling throughout the book. And I love the setting. It takes place in a boarding school in New England at the end of senior year. It just reminds you of all those senioritis feelings of being anxious about the future, but also being excited because you're no longer going to be a kid. I just really enjoyed this book so much. After I read that book, because I enjoyed it so much, I decided to go straight into Maybe Meant to Be. I think this was her first book, and again, it was re-released last year under a brand new cover. This one's also a YA romance. It follows two characters. It's actually dual POV. It follows a male main character and a female main character. At first, you think that they're the ones who are going to be in love with one another, but it turns out they're simply best friends. Even though everyone else thinks they're in love, they have no feelings towards one another. The male main character is actually gay and throughout the book you see him come to terms with that fact and accept his sexuality versus the female main character is in love with her best friend's brother who happened to be twins and she has her own set of issues that she has to overcome because she comes from a divorced family home even though she loves her best friend's brother she doesn't think that they're old enough to actually commit to one another and she doesn't want anything to jeopardize their future so again both characters are kind of dealing with their own set of problems and try to overcome some insecurities, some obstacles. Charlie is a male main character who is struggling with his sexuality. And then Luke comes into the picture and has him questioning everything. I love their relationship with one another. I thought they were so cute, so adorable. Absolutely loved them. Then we have Sage, who is the female main character who is in love with Nick, I believe was Charlie's brother's name. Yeah, she's in love with Nick. I didn't really care for their relationship. It was cute, but I was kind of underwhelmed with it, especially since Charlie and Luke were so adorable. Even though it it was dual POV. It felt like Charlie and Sage were the exact same character and they were just one person. There wasn't really any defining moment where I could tell it was Charlie speaking or it was Sage speaking. They honestly sounded the same. They had the same exact personality, the same type of dialogue, the same banter with their friends. I will say that I really enjoyed the side characters, but since I couldn't really tell the difference between Charlie and Sage, and I decided to give this book a three out of five stars. It wasn't bad, but it's definitely not my favorite KL Walther. 
author book. I would recommend What Happens After Midnight and The Summer Broken Rules if you want a good beach read. Another thing about this book, I don't know when it was originally published, but it also felt very dated. Like a lot of the things that the characters went through, I don't know if they would necessarily go through the same exact things in 2024. And then I finally read Happy Place by Emily Henry. You guys, I did a lot of reading on the Libby app, which if you're unfamiliar with the Libby app, is basically an app where you input your library card number and you have access to a ton of books that you can borrow for I think like 21 days, read them for free and then return them all through the Libby app. And then if you have the Kindle app and prefer to read on the Kindle app, you can transfer the library book to your Kindle app and read it from the Kindle app, which I thought was really cool. So many of you guys have been telling me for like ever to download Libby. And for some reason, I just never have until the other day. I was like, you know what? I'm kind of tired of paying for Kindle Unlimited. That's like 11, 12 bucks every single month that I could be using for other things. And I finally downloaded Libby and I'm obsessed. I got rid of my Kindle Unlimited and I've read so many books this month. Well, maybe like three books, but still that's a lot from Libby. And I've already saved probably 30, 40 bucks from using Libby app. Not every book is available on Kindle Unlimited, obviously. So I would have to go to Barnes or order books online. And I was able to read some really popular books for free, which is amazing. But I did end up reading Happy Place by Emily Henry. And even though I will start off this review by saying that I haven't found a book that surpasses Beach Read for me from Emily Henry, but this one came very, very close. I love this book so much. I love the two main characters. I love the side characters. The group of friends were so cute, so adorable. I loved how close everyone was. Despite being in different areas of their life, they still came together and they still were super understanding with one another. It is second chance romance, which not a huge fan of second chance romance. Anything that has to do with like childhood friends to lovers or second chance romance tropes, I'm not really here for it. But Emily Henry's writing made up for me not being a fan of this trope. And I ended up really loving this book. I ended up giving it a 4.5. It was almost a five star rating. Honestly, I can't remember why I didn't give it five stars. Maybe I just gave it 4.5 because it is a second chance romance and I didn't really love the trope. There's also a miscommunication trope in there, which is not my favorite either. But overall, I definitely would recommend this as a really good beach read this summer. Definitely read it, the atmosphere, the environment, everything that the friends that got up to just gave me the best summer vibes and made me so excited for summer to arrive. I also really like Emily Henry's writing because it feels very realistic. Her love stories feel like they can actually happen in real life. Not like some of the dark romances that I read that are so out of left field that you know there's no chance in hell of that ever happening in real life. Emily Henry's writing feels very genuine, very realistic. Even though there's spicy scenes in her books, they're not overdone. She doesn't bombard her books with a million different spicy scenes. I don't find them cringy. I love all of her characters, love all her books so far that I've read, and I can't wait to read her next book release that's coming out very soon. I think it comes out next month or in April. Either way, I'm very excited to check it out. And then I read another very popular book on Libby, which was Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. This is the third book in the Love Hypothesis series, which you guys should all know by now that the Love Hypothesis is one of my all-time favorite rom-coms. I love that book so much. I reread it last year. Ended up giving it a five-star rating yet again. Absolutely loved Olive and Adam. Perfection. I did read Love on the Brain, I think last year or the year before that. Absolutely hated that book. I thought it was a bad replica of the Love Hypothesis. Like it was trying so hard to be the Love Hypothesis and it just failed miserably. Even though I still got Love Hypothesis vibes in this book, I, I do think this book is 10 times better than Love on the Brain. Even though I do think it's better, I didn't love it. I felt kind of meh about the two main characters. I didn't really buy their chemistry. I don't know if I'm going to get hate for this, but all her books feel the same. They all feel like they're trying to be the love hypothesis. Like she'll switch little things here and there. For the most part, it feels like I'm reading the same book. And even though I love the love hypothesis, I don't want to read the same book over and over. I'm very excited to read her book, The Bride, because it's completely different from the love hypothesis series. I also think it's YA fantasy. 
or horror. I don't know what the genre is. I know it's not her typical romance or her typical rom-com genre. So I'm very excited to read it. And this one especially felt too science-y for me. There was too much STEM world talk, which I get it. That's the appeal of her book. And there's tons of people that could relate to her writing. This one definitely felt too science-y. There was too much talk about academia and like being a professor, being a grad student. Also, she made undergrad students appear so stupid. And I don't know, but I was an undergrad once and I did not behave the way she made undergrads behave in this book. And it made me question my generation or the next generation. I'm like, are undergrads really acting like that? Really emailing the professors that way? Whenever I was in danger of missing a deadline, I would bust my ass to make the deadline. I never asked for an extension. Are people really out here doing the most for extensions? I don't know. But other than that, it was an okay read. Not the best, but it was a lot better than Love on the Brain for sure. And then I read Divine Rivals. I ended up giving this book a four star rating. If you're unfamiliar with Divine Rivals, it is a YA fantasy. It follows a main character who is a journalist or she's trying to be a journalist. She is writing about a war that's going on between two gods. Her brother actually ends up going to war and she loses communication with him. So in an effort to find out what happened to her brother, she goes to the front lines to report on the war. It is a romance. So there is a male character involved and it's a little bit dual POV because you get the male main character's perspective in certain parts, but the female main character's perspective definitely takes priority. The writing was absolutely beautiful. It was very magical, but with that being said, it was pretty slow, especially at the beginning. It took me over 200 pages to actually get into the story and to actually care about the characters. And when I first started reading this book, I was questioning why everyone was obsessed with it. It wasn't until maybe the last half that I was like, okay, I get the obsession. Even now, I wouldn't say that I absolutely loved the book. I thought it was a really good read. Again, the writing was absolutely beautiful. I loved the two main characters. I loved the romance, but it took so long to get to the actual romance and it took so long to get to the actual action part of the book that I was really bored. I will be checking out the second and final book in the series because I need to know what's going to happen next. The book did end in a huge cliffhanger. The next book that I read in February was The Love Wager by Lynn Painter. This book pains me so much because I normally love Lynn Painter's writing. I think she writes the cutest little rom-coms. This one definitely felt flat for me. I didn't enjoy it as much as her other books. It's a pretty new release. I think it came out last year. It follows two main characters who are trying to enter the dating world again after ending long-term relationships. After spending one night together being each other's one night stand, they make a wager to see who can find love first and they start hanging out with one another after their date. It was a cute read but I didn't really care for the two main characters. The female main character annoyed me so many times especially when she went on these feminist rants for absolutely no reason. Like I have no problem with feminism. I 100% believe that men and women should be equal but when people just go on rants for no reason it annoys me and that was the female main character. Like there was an instance when they went speed dating and for some reason the female main character was upset that the females had to sit and that the men were the ones circling and I felt so bad for the host of the event because they were about to start and all of a sudden the female main character decided to speak up and change things up and the hostess was so stressed trying to make it work and I was just like why would you do that to an employee a hostess who's probably not getting paid enough or probably doesn't even want to be there and yet you're making her job 10 times harder there were so many instances like that throughout the book that just irked me and the male main character definitely has some questionable moments as well that kind of were red flags for me. It was very disappointing because I started reading this book and I was a few chapters in and I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to love it. I think I'm going to end up giving it five stars. And then it quickly went downhill and I kind of was indifferent to both of the characters and their love. So it was a very disappointing read to say the least. I ended up giving this book a three star rating. It definitely was funny at times and it had me laughing, but for the majority of the book, I was just like, what the hell? Why is this happening? And then I read the Mindfuck series by ST Abbey. There's five books in this series. These books were so intriguing. So if you're unfamiliar with the Mindfuck series, it follows a female serial killer who's out for revenge. She is killing a group of men who wronged her in her teenage years. And she ends up meeting the FBI profiler who's in charge of her victims' cases. And they end up falling from one another. So throughout each book, you see them get deeper into their relationship, but she doesn't stop 
stop killing nothing's more important to her than exacting her revenge on these group of men and on the people that she felt wronged her not even this love that she's feeling for this fbi profiler it's very sad especially in the last i want to say the last two books get very descriptive of exactly what happened to her and why she's killing the men definitely very unrealistic i mean i'm gonna say it's unrealistic because i can't see this happening in real life but i enjoyed every single moment there were certain parts that did slow down but since the books were so short you just wanted to keep reading and you wanted to keep finding out what was going to happen next i'm so happy that the series was on kindle unlimited and that i was able to read it because it's a very entertaining if you want a fast-paced romance definitely check it out but it's a tiny bit dark because it does follow a female serial killer but the romance element is not dark at all the fbi profiler has no idea that he's dating a female serial killer again a very fast-paced entertaining read i probably will give the whole series a four star rating there are some books i think the first three books i gave three stars to and then the final two books i gave a high four or four point five the series definitely gets a lot better as the books progress and then i read the improbable meet cute series which was written specifically for valentine's day which i thought was really cute and it's christina lauren abby jimenez sally thorne jasmine glory i hope i'm pronouncing her last name correctly ashley poston and saraya wilson these six authors got together to each write a novella and each novella involves a meet cute that happens on valentine's day the first book in the series the exception to the rule was written by christina lauren immediate five stars i love this book so much it was such a cute little rom-com novella the second book worst wingman ever by abby jimenez i ended up giving four stars the last four books in the series i didn't love i don't think i'm a fan of sally thorne's writing in general i read the hating game i thought it was okay then i read second first impressions didn't really like that book and now i've read rosie in the dream boat by her which was her novella didn't enjoy this book i ended up giving it one star it was very slow and i just don't enjoy it i don't enjoy her characters i don't enjoy her world building and then drop cover and hold on was by jasmine glory i ended up giving this book a two stars this one felt like it should have been a longer book i probably would have liked it if it was a traditional like romance book but since it was a novella it definitely felt rushed and it felt like everything happened too quickly so i ended up giving two stars and then with any luck by ashley poston i honestly can't tell you anything about that book i don't remember reading it but i know that i gave it two stars and then royal valentine by saraya wilson i ended up dnfing because i did not like it and i would give it a one star overall i would recommend this series i thought it was a really cute concept like i said each book or each novella i should say revolves around a meet cute that happens on or around valentine's day and each plot was pretty interesting and very unique if you just finish a book and don't want to start a new book or you don't want to start a new series these little novellas are great palette cleansers and i would recommend them for that reason or if you don't have time to sit down for a large book and you just want a quick little read definitely check out these novellas they're on kindle unlimited so you can check them out if you have kindle unlimited and then the final book that i read this month was the marriage auction this was another interesting read i ended up giving a 3.5 stars it follows a group of characters there are actually a lot of characters which can get a little difficult to keep up with throughout the book but it follows a group of characters mainly women who enter a marriage auction they consent to it it's not human trafficking or anything like that they basically consent to be an auction off to a billionaire who buys their marriage they have to stay married for at least three years in order for the woman to get her million dollar payout and each woman has her own reasonings for joining the marriage auction a lot of it has to do with financial hardship and trying to save their families and things like that the men are all super sweet super kind they go into it because they want to find love or they're lonely or they have to find a wife for financial reasons all the characters have different personalities but they all work you get the female perspective and you also get the male perspective as well I was kind of confused throughout the book because i was like okay who is he going to marry and who is she going to marry what's going on but all of the characters were really cute and really sweet and i could see the chemistry between the couples which i really loved some of it felt insta lovey but there were a lot of times where it didn't at first i was getting the ick because plot sounds like it's human trafficking but it's not the women are, con are consenting to being in this arranged marriage and they're getting a huge payout at the end and background checks are being made the women are made to be feel safe they're good marriages but it's 
it took me a while to understand and get into that concept i had to physically tell myself like listen this is fiction it's romance it's not happening in real life that i know of so just go with it and enjoy it for the entertainment value and it was very entertaining i ended up giving a 3.5 stars it's actually the first book in a series which i haven't decided if i'm going to continue the series i probably will but if you're looking for something different something that's going to be entertaining it's going to be a pretty fast read definitely check out this series and definitely check out the first book it wasn't bad at all those are all the books that i read in the month of february i definitely had a pretty good month i read a lot more than i usually do but that's because i read so many short books and so many novellas let me know in the comments below what books you read in february i would love to know and that's pretty much it for today's video i really hope you guys enjoyed watching if you did don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe i would love to have you a part of my channel and i'll see you guys in the next one bye guys